Hello fellow Hordes of the Blue and welcome to my channel and welcome to a series of videos called Technique 101, a series of short videos where I show you my way of approaching different techniques, surely not the only way or the correct way, I doubt there is a correct way of doing things, it's just what works for me. In this video I'm going to show you what I consider to be the most powerful and useful technique for contrast paints, but also a useful technique full stop, feathering. But before we start and just so we can have an uninterrupted lesson, let me introduce you to today's video sponsor, Magic Spoon. Let's be honest, what we all want is to eat like children, because, well, that's just fun. But we are adults and, as adults, all joy is sucked out of our lives. Until now, Magic Spoon is fueling and wholesome. With no artificial ingredients, it has the great taste that you love with more protein and zero sugar. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented and it fits a variety of lifestyle. It's keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, naturally flavored and most importantly, it's delicious. The amazing variety pack comes in four delicious flavors, fruity, frosted, cocoa, and peanut butter. My choice for today is cocoa. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try today and be sure to use the promo code Juan Hidalgo at checkout to get $5 off of any order or go to myxpoon.com slash Juan Hidalgo. And MyXpoon is so confident in their product is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen and use the code Juan Hidalgo for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash Juan Hidalgo to save $5 today. I've always thought feathering is the most underrated and underused painting technique, especially when we talk about contrast paints. I rarely see anyone else use it and it's so powerful to build up transitions that you can get in one single pass what will take you 10 times more using glazing and just as smooth. I've used it extensively in my videos, but I've never shown how I actually do it in detail. So here is a behind the scenes on that. Let's get cracking. Feathering is one of the most powerful techniques you can conquer, especially for contrast paints or any contrast equivalent. There are so many now that <laughs> it's easy to lose track. Once you get it, you will be able to achieve instant blends with no effort whatsoever. It just makes painting so, so fast. And here I have this nice base primed in white. Excuse my primer fingers. And I'm going to use a really intense contrast color. This is Sigmar Burgundy. Of course, this works best with the more transparent ones, but you can use this and get dramatic transitions. Yeah, that just happened. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Sometimes droppers are not the answer. I'm going to pick up some of the sacred Burgundy. And the key here is you need to apply this to the area you want this to be. Then we're going to clean our brush in our flat, fresh, clean water. And then we need to dry that brush. You need to drive the moisture out. You can do this using a paper towel or like me, you can use your mouth because, well, I am disgusting. We're going to apply this, clean our brush, drive off the moisture here, and blend it. With this such intense colors, we have to repeat the cleaning process to get the smoothest transition possible. Also remember, this is so unforgiving because we're doing this over a white primer. But you can see what a great transition, even with these stark differences in colors, we get with feathering. Feathering is amazing, especially with contrast paints. 
but we can also use feathering with not contrast paints. Here we have Mephiston Red, and I'm going to try and do this with Mephiston. I put a little bit of Mephiston Red here, and I'm going to use Retarder for this. Whatever Retarder you use, it's going to be fine. I have this War Colors one, I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to pick a little bit of the Retarder and mix it with the paint. Not too much, just a little bit, just like that. Then I'm going to apply my paint. I'm going to clean my brush. Dry off the moisture and blend it. For acrylic paints, you do need to use retarder. For contrast paints, you don't. That being said, you need to understand that the weather is going to affect how this works and if it's really 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 hot where you are then contrast paints will probably dry before or start to dry before you get the chance to blend them out in that case probably try a little bit of the retarder mixed in that can probably help or move to a range that has a slower drying time like express color feathering is essentially how people like gareth nicholas blend their initial uh, blends. What he usually does is apply a, a sketch of color, like we have done here, for example, a circle, and then feathers it out for the initial blend. So he essentially has a pre-blended sketch. Again, you have to be pretty quick if you want to do this without retarder, and I highly not recommend I don't really recommend it. And it's really challenging to do in circles, but if you have retarder applied to your paint, like I have, then you have quite a little bit of leeway. I'm not the best at doing this with acrylic paints, so <laughs> bear that in mind. I'm not Gareth Nicholas, but if you ever buy some of his guides, and I highly recommend you do, this is essentially how he pre-blends his sketches. You don't need any medium, don't need anything you don't need to you know apply medium then apply the paint and then blend them together you don't need to do that you just need the correct technique and be as fast as possible that's why i use my mouth to clean my brush usually because it's just faster and it gives me more control about the amount of moisture in my brush but that's a topic for another day now i will just enjoy my cocktail I will apply Wildwood into the lower half of the shield, just like so. Then I'm going to take a brush, clean it in my pot of water and then feather this out towards the top. Just like that, we have a beautiful gradient almost immediately. So what you have to do for this is apply it over the top half of the limbs, clean your brush and then feather out into the rest. One of the advantages of the express paints is that they dry very slowly. So doing these kind of techniques, it's actually pretty easy. We'll tint all of these surfaces to have a slight purpley hue. Here on the tail, the same thing we did when we applied the gray mix. We have to apply it and feather it out into the rest of the tail. On top of all of this, I'm going to apply this to the half back of the face. Apply up, up to here, and I'm going to feather it out. Again, if you don't feel comfortable with the feathering per method, just use glazes. The result is going to be the same, it's just going to take more time. And as you can see, I'm going to apply Magus Purple, like this. And then I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to feather this out into the rest, just like this. So apply. Clean the brush and feather out into the rest of the body, just like this. I will apply this into the darker areas of the fur, just like that. Very careful around the flesh areas, like this. I'm going to clean my brush as I did before with the Magus Purple and I'm going to blend this into the rest of the body.
if you have uh, too much paint there, you may have to do this in a couple of passes, the cleanup, just to take off the excess just like this. And again, as before, I'm going to apply it, I'm going to clean my brush very quickly, and I'm going to feather it out. If you don't feel comfortable with this method, you can always uh, thin it down into a glaze consistency and apply it over several layers, but I like this because it's quicker. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget that if you like my videos and want to help me make them, you can follow me on social media, you have the links to all my social media in the description below and in the pinned comment of this video. Share and like this video, but most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. Patreons and members allow me to do all the cool videos that I want to make, and most importantly, they allow me to release them all for free here on YouTube. Perks include access to an amazing Discord community full of lovely people, early access to some of the videos, and now also private one-on-one -on -one online tutorings. Help me and my family enjoy the list of the coolest persons in the planet, including Des, Jose Navarro, Luis Manuel Toca Oria, Miguel Angel Sancho Molinero, Janner, Flo, Terry Denham, Robert Smith, Terrinosaur, Will Ewig, Heather Amster, Grisha, Kalish, Stavros Stavro, Tommy Rukum, Cedric, Cosen Macher, Giovanni Constanza, Biom, Howard Holville, Thomas Ustergaard, Javi Mota, Christoph Moret, Bartolomeu Cahuza, Victor Domen, Nicolas Furnell, Hamish Donald, William Gilliland, Matthew Lang, Milan Shibish, Joseph Hunt, Joseph Noonan, Inigo Garcia, Kelly Richard, Strat Molina, Xingji Guo, C.A. Bramble, Mike Regueira, Scarlet Dragon, Chris Howell, Romaine, Ars Miniatura, Little Painted Stuff, Dan Sesk 92, MJG 3D, Jazz Rex, Joe Offut, Smurphy 676, Dakota M. Miller, Wesley Browning, Gunrunner 243, Dr. Cathaver, Daniel Slovo, Dune Vader, Hayano Ken, Angelos Alex So, Alastis, Mick Gallagher, Felix Franke, Aaron Bernstein, Alfredo Phillips, Danger 2007, Stephanie Ol, Nick DeMao, David Sutherland, Royal Nilsson, Oscar Jonathan Thornberg, Dan Marco Cristalios, Carlos Rivera, Jaime, Jamie Milligan, Kevin Mian, Darcy Farrar, Chris Fivey, Samuel, Natius Maximus, Aaron Dell, Gareth Smith, Mark Atkinson, Mark Jarvis, Joe Simpson, Charles Armintash, G4, Dr. B, Mark Wallace, Lenard Lindemann, Kirno Murthel, and Kevin Sullers. And as for me, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.